Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to League of Dungeoneers. We are in the middle of an opening dungeon delve here called Spring Cleaning. And we just completed an encounter with a zombie enemy here in this room. And we're going to move on and hopefully continue and find the objective room that we're looking for, the storage room. Um, and I've had a lot of feedback, a lot of comments, and honestly... These videos are some of the best performing videos I've done, so thank you all so very much for kind of following along and helping me figure out what I'm doing right and what I need to pay closer attention to. There's a lot to juggle in this game, but it's been really fun, and it's been neat to con connect with people online who have been playing it. So, yeah, we are going to move on. Combat is over, and so we are going to, first and foremost, we can't forget to... Uh, increase our threat. So we win combat, we increase threat. And a couple people pointed out in the last video that we had a minimum threat that we just kind of forgot about. Um, which I just really, honestly, just completely forgot that we couldn't go below two threat. Um, so, gotta make sure you pay attention to that. So yeah, just gotta... Pay attention to all those little rules and try to juggle it. But also, most importantly, and that's what we do here on the channel, is try to have fun. Um, so don't beat yourself up if you forget something. Another thing I, I looked around for is uh, when combat ends. And I'm just assuming that combat ends when all monsters are gone. And we just had one zombie uh, occur in this room. And we killed him. Um... And so we're just saying that combat is indeed over and a new round is starting. We had action points left, but I think we would just start another round right when combat ends since we're not doing initiative tokens and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, lots to learn, lots to try to remember. And it's been, honestly, it's been a little bit since I've played. So I'm going to try to remember to juggle everything. We'll take our time and have fun. But of course, follow along with me, play along and uh, enjoy the rest of this delve. We're trying to find that objective room. We're going to start a new round, and so of course we need to roll a scenario die. So here is the roll for the scenario. Whoops. All right, so it's a nine, meaning we need to roll against our threat. Our threat is currently sitting at four. So we're going to roll a d20. And if it's above our threat level, we raise it to one. But if it's below or equal to the threat level, we're going to roll on the threat table and execute the result. So here we go. All right, and it's above our threat level. So we're going to increase our threat level by one and then move on to character actions. All right, so first up, we have Neely right here behind the door. So I think we'll go ahead and have them try to open this door. We have two rolls coming, a d6 for a trap and a d10 to see if it's locked. Again, refer to our handy flow chart here. First thing we need to do is increase threat. So we're up to six. And now we're gonna roll those two rolls. Again, the d6 tells us if there are traps on this door and the D10 tells if, it, if it's locked or not. So, all right, on a four of the six. So it's not trapped. And a four, oh, that's a percentile dice, but we'll, it's still got 10 faces on it. So we'll count it um, one to four. It's not locked either. Awesome. It's a good first start here because our, our party is okay. We're in decent shape, but we have been delving for a good long time. And... Uh, I, I'm really hoping we find this objective room soon. So let's go ahead and open this door and we'll see what we have. Okay, the door flings wide open and we find, hey, it's the objective room. Look at that. This is the room we've been looking for. It's time to finish the quest. We're going to consult the quest book for the description and special rules for this room. And if you remember, our objective room is this storage room. It's R5B. There's one other door on it, but the room is quite large and it's filled with crates and barrels. And judging from the lack of dust on the floor, it seems as if the room has been in recent use. Four sets of boxes, three sets of barrels in the room that can be searched. So we'll get that tile out and we'll proceed. 
All right, here's the room set up. We had to put it in this particular configuration. It's about the only place we could actually make it fit based on where the other tiles are in this dungeon. And here is the text for the objective room. The heroes enter what seems to be a large storage room. The room is filled with a huge or huge piles of crates and barrels and everywhere they look, the heroes can see the beady red eyes of large rodents staring at them malevolently. Everything is covered in cobwebs and seems to have been untouched for many years. In the far back, a huge creature can be seen much larger than the rest and heavily deformed. It is questionable whether this rat is living or undead. So we're entering this large dusty room. It's filled with old crates and barrels and there are 1d10 rats in the room placed randomly. And as far away as possible from the player is the Broodmother. And if the party has not encountered Johan yet, he is also going to be at the far end of the room. So the Broodmother is an obscenely large rat, almost the size of a small horse. She is the mother of the rats, and she will fight to the end to protect her prodigy. She's got a combat skill of 45, no range skill. She has 1d10 damage. She has one natural armor. Dex is 35. She's minus 5 to hit. 25 resolve, 4 movement points, and 15 HP. We get 115 XP for defeating her. The Broodmother is such an abomination that she causes fear and furthermore her bite, which causes a wound, might infect the bitten with a disease. So let's go ahead and set out the enemies. We have 1d10 rats and also the Broodmother and then also Johan the Gardener. He's stumbling around the basement. He's the old town hall gardener. Uh, unfortunately, he's no longer alive, and the zombie remnant of his body walks aimlessly through the corridor. It's possibly animated by some foul magic. Or perhaps the ground itself. He uses standard zombie stats, and he's unarmed. Okay, so let's get all that stuff out, and we'll continue. All right, so let's go ahead and roll a d10 to see how many rats go out. We've got six rats, so we'll put them out randomly according to some of the randomization tables. And we've got these nice standees for them here. And we have the Broodmother standee, which is a little bit bigger as well. So we're gonna put all that stuff out. We use our zombie mini from earlier for Johan. And then we'll get into some combat. Okay, so we've rolled a D6 and a D12, starting with this corner here. And roll the six would be where we went on this side, and the 12 would be where we went on this side. And most of the rats are kind of here, almost guarding the broodmother. It's just to put the broodmother as far away as possible from the player, so that's kind of the opposite corner from where we're entering. Johan is also on the far side of the room, so I just put him on the opposite corner. And there was also another door in here, so we've got that. Okay, so we're all set up to go here, and we've got tokens in the bag. And one thing to note is that the giant rat has perfect hearing, which is going to cancel out the perfect hearing from one of our heroes. And we start a new round now that combat has started and encounter has started. So we need to do a scenario die roll. Nine and 10 threat roll happens. So that's a one. So no threat roll needed. And we're going to go straight to the bag. One thing to do before we start drawing tokens, however, is testing fear. Now the giant rats and the broodmother both have a fear score of two, so we need to test resolve. And the, some commenters have told me, and I've looked at BGG, how fear works is that you roll once, and if you fail, you take the sanity and party morale damage, and then you're afraid the rest of the battle. But if you pass, you don't have to keep continuously testing. So we're gonna do that right now for each of our heroes. So Monty's resolve here is 37. They rolled a 92, so they are afraid. Where's the 46? 96, he's also afraid. Five is Neely's because of discipline. Afraid. And Dorlin, he's got a decent resolve of 40. Rolled up 47. So you'd get a plus five from disciplined from Neely, but that is still over that. So everyone's at minus 10 when we attack. We do have these handy fear tokens to help us remember that we are now afraid going into this encounter. So we'll give one to each character. 
And we have to remember to take the party morale damage for each fail and sanity damage from each fail as well. So we're reaching into the bag. We have a total of 12 tokens in there, eight for the enemies, four for the heroes. Let's see who's gonna go first. It's gonna be an enemy. So we're gonna look here at the activation and the enemies are gonna activate in this order. We'll start with a magic user or an enemy armed with a ranged weapon. We have none of those. An enemy adjacent to a hero, none of those. Closest to hero that could charge. We could possibly have a charge situation here. Or an enemy that has enough space to move its full movement and then would we'll go random. So I think we would start with this enemy here. And indeed we are in a straight line here to Dorlin so we can attack anybody in these two adjacent spaces through a door. So we would move up to full movement, which is six. We don't need it. So one, two, to be right here, kind of adjacent to Dorlin. Okay, so I don't believe we've used a dodge with Dorlin. We each get one dodge per adventure. And to do so, we use the dodge skill on our character sheet and roll the plus 15. Um, I do have the token set aside on our party sheet now to to track where they use the dodge. It's been so long since I recorded the first episode, I honestly don't remember if I did. So apologies if I'm using a dodge and shouldn't have, but I don't think I did. Um, memory's not the best, but if you uh, watched the first episode from a few weeks ago and I'm dodging here a second time, please let me know and we can uh, make a note of that in the video. Anyway, we're gonna roll a dodge to try to not get knocked off balance by this first giant rat. So we need to roll a d100 check, and our dodge skill with Dorlin here is, I'm trying to find it, 53 plus 15, so we need a 68 to pass this check. All right, we rolled a four, so that is a successful dodge. We'll move the token from the party sheet, and uh, we don't have that dodge anymore. That's great. So that's the first rat done. That's two action points to charge. All right, so we're back to the bag here. See who gets to go next. Got another enemy. And I think it would be, let's see. This one's close, but he's not able to charge because he's not in a straight line with anybody, diagonally or orthogonally. So I think we're just gonna have somebody move full movement. This rat's actually close enough to get to any hero and with one movement, because they have six. And they may move through all models and zone of control for free, but they cannot stop in a square with another model. But they can get to any of our heroes there and attack them. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and roll a d4 and see who they go for. So it's one, two, three, four. Four Dorland. So one, two, three, four, and we'll go. Yeah, keep them there. Or should we keep them back here? So B say if they are more than movement spaces away from here, they move towards. If they're adjacent, no. If they're within movement spaces of a hero perform. Yeah, I don't know like yeah, how close they would get, you know. So we could go in here and make room. He's not adjacent, so we can't make room right now. We'll just say he stays there, because that's his little movement as possible and then he'll make a standard attack so his CS is 45 Let's see what we got here uh, 85 so that rat misses so that was their two actions move and attack well first we should double check to see their actions as well but actually yeah, so it will have just been a standard attack because they can't use a special talent. They can't power attack because they moved. So I think we're good there. All right, back to the bag. Got a hero. Let's see if we can't get Bomber in here in order to take standard attack. Short Sword is going to be the attack weapon, but we're at minus 10 of our combat skill. 
of 58, so we need 48 to attack. And not going to do it with a 56. Okay. Let's go back to the bag. Another bad guy. So we're just going to start moving rats forward with six movements. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll get another action, but I'm not sure what else to do. I think you can only attack through a doorway um, to the two spots adjacent to the doorway. That's what it says here in the rules under fighting and doorways. That's how I'm understanding it. It says, any character standing next to a doorway can attack or shove an enemy standing on any of the opposite two squares on the other side of the doorway. So we couldn't, like, attack through here. Um, don't believe. So I think these rats are just going to start just swarming and move forward. So let's go back to the bag. All right, so we've got another hero here. So I think what we need to do first is probably move Dorlin back. One, two, three, and reload our weapon, and that'll be their turn. So that's two action points. We'll go back to the bag. Another rat. So we'll keep moving forward. One, two, three, four. And the rat could shove. Um, only same size or smaller. Roll an enemy dex, adding DB times 10. There's no damage bonus for these guys. Roll on an enemy dex. So I I don't know if that means we could shove our own people. A model may try to shove another adjacent model that does not have a large special rule by rolling higher than the target's dex. They're kind of brainless. Let's do that for fun. If you don't think I should do that, let me know. But I think it would be fun uh, to see if this guy can shove his rat buddy in there. And we'll go from there, making some more room. It says shove if necessary on the behavior card. Actually, yeah, I knew I had seen that somewhere. Okay, so I think it can, they can shove. So this guy's gonna do a dex test against another rat. Their dex is 40. And if we roll above enemy dex, we push them. So let's see here. Yeah, with 50, we're going to do it. So we're going to push this guy in. And then we get to close the gap. All right, so we're back to the bag here. I keep thinking that this guy maybe could have done something else, maybe could have shoved, but uh, it was there was a lot going on in there. So we'll just say he just scurried up there and waited with his AP. Next person. Another hero. Okay. So I think we'll go with Mr. Slate Strike here and attack, just attack the rat right in front of us. Maybe do a power attack too. We'll see. You know, we'll say, we'll say the rat is ready to parry, which is a funny picture. Uh, we'll see here. All right, so let's do an attack with Neely. Enemies using power attack lose their defense mod. All right, so the rats are at minus five. I think we forgot about that earlier with our other attack, but we missed anyway. So our total minus 15 here. We are gonna do a power attack. That's gonna give us a plus 20 bonus. So really we're at plus five, meaning we're at 45 here. All right, so minus 15 for fear and the to hit, plus 20 for power attack. So 
just gonna give us a plus five. Wow, okay, let's just try it. Tower attack. And we got a 65, so that unfortunately is gonna be a miss. So we'll put down that we did a power attack. Enemy rat's gonna go. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Next one. Another enemy. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. We're just crowding the door here. Enemy. Crude Mother's movement is a little less, so we'll go two, three, four, five, six. It's getting getting pretty crowded there. Then our wizard could go. I don't know what they can really do though, unfortunately. Oh, you know what, we could go one, two to get within range here and maybe try to hit this rat with something. Let's try that. Because we can trace middle to middle here on this rat right through the door. So let's check our spells. We have 43 mana left. Let me go ahead and do a flare. All right, so we have line of sight on that rat and flare has a casting value of eight. So we're gonna subtract that from our arcane score of 60 to get to 52. So we need to roll at 52 or lower to be successful here. So here we go. And we got a 35. So first blood drawn here. Let's roll damage. Damage for the flare is a d8. And we got a six. So we are gonna take out our first rat, which is awesome. There's no to hit needed, so we wouldn't have taken the... Yeah, so that 35 would hit, uh, even despite being afraid. So goodbye rat, one rat down, which is awesome. Let's subtract our mana so we don't forget. All right, we'll go back to the bag. Yay, one rat down out of many. So this is just gonna be the zombie. That's all who's left. And his movement is four, he'll double move. One, two, three, four, six. Okay, looking gross. Time to put everything back in the bag. Minus one enemy token, and then we'll go from there. So we're going to roll the scenario die first on 9 or 10, something happens, and it's a 4, so nothing to happen there. Let's go ahead and go to the bag. All right, first up, we've got a hero. Who do we want to go first? I think we're all jammed up here. We got to make some space. So we're going to move this guy forward. We'll remember that we're standing on the corpse of a dead rat. Get down to take a swipe. Gets the rat right in front of him. That would have been two movement points because we're in their zone of control. So we've got overall negative 15 to our combat skill here because five for the to hit value and then 10 for fear. All right, so it's not great. That is a 25 total for Neely's combat skill. Oof, not in a good spot here. All right, let's try here. 49, yeah, so a miss, a whiff there from Neely. 
Then we'll go back to the bag here. Got a rat, most likely. So let's look at the enemy activation. We would activate an enemy adjacent to a hero that could make room, including shoving. So I think what we'll do is we'll try to shove Neely with this rat, maybe right here, try to shove him back through the door. And we're gonna roll against his decks, and which is probably not that great. Yeah, it's 30. Our dex overall is 40. So we need to roll above a 40. And we can close the gap and then do another attack. Here's our shove, above a 40. Yeah, it's a 90, it's a really good roll. So this guy's gonna shove Neely back straight and close the gap. All right, so they have another action so they can attack. Uh, combat skill is 45. Let's get within it. Yeah, they, of course they do, 38. Let's see where they hit. Well, first, actually, let's go back a little bit. See what their uh, attacks would be here. Yeah, so it's standard attack or power attack. It's the only thing different you could do, and there's no special talent, so they would just attack. Yeah, all right, so 38 is going to hit. Let's see what their damage is going to be. A d6. Roll another one to see where it hits. Red one will be location. Ooh, max damage, that's not good. Four and six. So on the torso, I'm gonna see if we hit any quick slots. We don't have anything quick slotted right now. Uh, six damage, that is not good. Max HP is 13, so just shy of being wounded. All right, let's go back to the bag. He made more room for his buddies. Another rat. I think this rat could do the same thing. You gotta remember that he activated. Put him right now, he can shove. So let's do that, let's roll against the decks of our halfling. which is 32, which is even lower. Nope, that's Monty. Wrong character sheet. 57, that's a little higher. So they need above a 57 to successfully shove. And they got a 57 exactly. Wow, these rats are strong. Oh gosh, the dungeon's falling apart, so am I. So here we go, standard attack coming. No. Less than 45. They got 40. They're rolling really well. Damage and location. Three and max damage again. Wow. All right. So. Bomber is down six. So he is at half. He is wounded. Make sure we make note of that. Back to the bag. Hey, a hero gets to go. Do I try to get around and backstab? Might be too risky. Let's see what we can do here. One, two, three. We'll try to get to the behind this rat and backstab him, which is, might be dumb, but... Oh wait, we, we just said we have one action. Okay, no, we have to stay and attack. So minus 10 because we're afraid. So 48. 
combat skill we're looking for here. And we got a 60, so it's a miss. Got to make sure we do durability as well. Uh, and defense, actually. Uh, so we did have a padded jacket. Okay, so we're not taking full damage. Ah, yeah. Remember, kids, this is how you play the game. So we're minus two on the damage, so he's up two more, so he's not wounded. So we could do what we were going to do there. Hmm. So we can just take another attack, because all we do when we backstab is just ignore armor, and these guys don't have any. So we're going to take another standard attack. Now let's double check Neely's. Uh, yeah, we had three defense there on that torso as well, so we could we could get three more hit points back for Neely. So we're up to ten. All right, so one more attack coming at that rat. Here we go. Forty-eight. That's better. That's an eleven. Let's roll damage from our short sword. It's a d6 plus 2. Max damage. Another rat gone. That is great. They're just piling up over here. Okay. Back to the bag. Rackets go. Can't forget that min minus five to hit. I think that still would have hit though. Can't forget that though. All right. Who is going to go next? So I think we're going to let this. Rat go because he can charge our halfling friend. And uh, we do still have a dodge a bomber, so we could try that as well. So let's go ahead and we'll move, use two action points with this rat to charge up here and attack, and we'll try to do a dodge here. Dodge is 57. And we rolled a 98, so no dodge there. So let's see what their combat skill is. It's 45 plus the 20 for the charge, which is a 65. And they rolled a 16, so yeah, it's going to be a nasty hit. Move back one square and we'll follow. Plus 10, not plus 20 for a charge. I was thinking the 20 from power attack. All right, so location and damage. All right. He said red's location before, so that is the arms. And only one damage, so not too bad. We do have a padded jacket, which takes some damage, but it blocks all damage. So durability is down one on the padded jacket, but no damage gets through. Okay, let's go back to the bag. Got another enemy here. Let's see, we can move this one in. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Yes, I think we'll try to attack Bomber again. Yeah. They can't power attack yet, so it'll just be a standard attack because they've already used one action point. All right, so let's see. Their action point is 45. And 76, they're going to miss. Scrambling up that furniture. Did nothing for them. Okay, we're back to the bag. Oh boy, these large combats are really taxing. All right, so we have three enemies to go. Two heroes. And what do we have here? An enemy. Okay, let's check the enemy activation. Uh, so we could shove with one of the rats. I don't think the zombie nor the broodmother could get it. Oh, and you know what? I'm just realizing the zombie can only move once per turn, so you'd be back two more spots. Right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, because of slow. Okay. Um, broodmother could move in. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I could get right in there and attack Neely. This guy, however, I think would shove. To make room, right? Perry stance is gone because it's his turn. We could go one, two, three. He could get right there and attack Neely, I think, because we can attack. Oh dear. Attack adjacent. Let's just do that. And it'll just be a standard attack. Let's do combat skill 45. Oh boy. 26, yeah, so that'll hit Neely. I'm just getting mauled up by these rats. Uh, red's location, green's damage. Three and four. Three is torso. Neely does have a leather jacket. So that'll eat up durability and we'll go down one more. Health putting us at nine. Ooh, all right. Who's next? Hero. All right, I think. Roland's weapon's loaded, so we'll move here. Take a shot at this rat. They just really swarmed in here. Every person I've seen online play this scenario, like kind of rushes in, or at least has more going on right here. But we we played cautious and we were getting swarmed for it. I think I mean we're okay, but it's it's dicey. <laughs> it's so dicey. Especially since the big guys can't get to us yet, which is which has been kind of nice, but uh, it's nice that we took out two rats already, but we still have a ways to go. We have a loaded weapon, and we do have range and line of sight on this guy. I did do an, uh, an adjacent range attack. Someone pointed that out last time, so I'm trying to remember to stay farther back. Let's go ahead and take an attack roll against this rat that's right in front of Dorlin. And we have to minus it from 15. Can't forget to do that. But our range skill is 78, so minus 15 on the range skill is going to be 63. Remember to unload our weapon. Remember to do arrow cost to. All right, so 63 to attack, and it's a 77. All right, wasted that arrow. Unloaded our weapon. Time to move on. So we have a wizard left, and we have our two kind of big bads back here. All right, a wizard gets to go. So we have 27 mana left, which is not great. We can basically get off a restoration and a flare. 
could do one of our spell. We could do two of our spells basically this turn and and that's next turn. We have two quick spells. We do have healing hands. Um, so we could try to do that. I'm assuming Arcane Arts is not affected if we're healing somebody with fear, although we're just in the general fear state, so maybe it does. Minus 10 Arcane Arts with spells directed against the fear-causing enemy, so I don't think Arcane Arts is affected uh, for our, our healing. So why don't we do that? Why don't we cast a heal? And with these all being quick spells, we could try to do another attack. We could do another flare too. Because we have, that would be all of our mana. And we would just be uh, swinging around wildly with a, a staff at that point. Okay. So let's, who do we heal? I guess Neely is right there. And he's our tanky boy, so I think this makes sense. Yeah, he's down. Well, he's down to nine. Do we wait? Do we wait? Let's see what happens with the... We'll do another flare at another rat. We'll see what happens after that. That's our highest, higher cost spell here. All right, so shooting another flare. It's going to be minus 10. But it's a magic missile, so no to hit. All right, so... Arcane Arts. Looking at a 50% shot. 50% shot. I think we actually would need to move up here. To get line of sight because we have the coffin there in the corner. So we'll say we move there. Yeah. 17 should do it. So let's roll damage. Yes. Eight damage. Cool. Another rat obliterated. All right, so let's make sure we subtract our mana. So we're down to 12. Two enemies left to go. The Broodmother could move six. We go one, two, three, four, five. Get in there. Wow. And then Johan can only move once, so he's going to go for. I don't know if this is considered adjacent. I don't think it is. So five would be, or wait, yeah, three, four, and then one, two. Okay, well, she could still get in there. And then who's gonna go four? All right, everything goes back in the bag. All right, I moved Johan back one because I realized he couldn't. Uh, move exactly how he did last time. Uh, let's do a scenario die roll here. Nine or ten, we roll against our threat. All right, and that is a three, so we're okay there. And apologies, I don't necessarily want to move. There's such a big dungeon here, I don't want to move everything. And my little camera arm doesn't go quite this far, so you probably can't see super well. Um, but we're going to try to do our best here. So we're going back to the bag. Let's see what happens. The brood mother is all up in our space. And what do we have? All right. So now that the herd is thinned a little bit, so to speak, let's um, check the enemy activation again. Sometimes I forget to check this. Uh, so an enemy adjacent to here that could make room for more enemies. Uh, we could use that rat to move. Why don't we do that? We'll go ahead and do that. We'll move this rat so you can make room for Johan because Johan right now can't get into any space. We do know that these rats can kind of move through models because they have scurry. Um, 
and zone of control doesn't matter as much for them. But I think they could go right here and make some trouble for our ranged character. We'll roll 2d6, not that it really matters. Uh, reds will go first here, 2 and 5. They would do an attack action, and they would do a power attack, standard attack if wounded. They can't do that because they've already moved. So it would just be a standard attack. Oh no, I'm sorry, it was a 5, so it would have been a standard attack anyway. All right, so let's roll a standard attack against Dorlin. Combat skill is 45. And they rolled a 72, so nothing's going to happen there. Let's put this token down. Let's get that guy activated and go back to the bag. Okay, a hero gets to go. Let's think about this. We have an unloaded weapon with our ranged character. I kind of think we need to get him out of trouble. We also could just go ahead and start wailing on the Broodmother. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Let's have one of our more melee engaged characters go ahead and go, and then we'll figure out what to do with Dorlin, depending on how that goes. And we're just saying facing is kind of all oriented this way for these characters. Um, so Neely's right there. Why don't we let Neely start uh, trying to attack the brood mother. They're not the best at that. We could do two attacks or a power attack. Let's see. All right, so they have a 40 and it's gonna be minus 15. So they'd only get a 25 to possibly attack. With a power attack, you get some added. Yeah, power attack would give us plus 20, which it's hard to know. Like, do you go for the two chances or you go for the better chance? I don't know here. Um, so two chances at 25 if we do two standard attacks or one chance uh, at 45. So we get plus 20 for the power attack. Um, yeah. The Broodmother does have natural armor too. His battle axe would ignore the armor, which would be nice. All right, let's try the power attack. Well, no, we don't leave him more vulnerable, actually. Let's do two regular attacks, so two at 25. It's possible, but not, the chances aren't great. Here we go. First one's a 70, not gonna do it. All right, second attack. 65, yeah. Oh well, we tried. Let's go back to the bag. As I'm thinking about it, we moved this rat to be able to get Johan in there, um, which doesn't make sense actually, because he still can't get, well, I guess he could get here. We might actually have this rat to have gone instead, because he could scurry through this guy and move up there, making more room for Johan. That just seems more optimal for them. Terrible for the heroes, but better for us. All right, next guy. Oh, another hero gets to go. This is good. This is very good. I don't know if we could actually get some, some stuff done here. I need to double check if we could go diagonal. You know what we could do actually? We need to do, let's try to do two hand of deaths. Oh, we can't do two, we can only do one. Let's do one hand of death and then maybe move with Monty. We have to do a combat check with a touch spell. So we'll do that. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we can do this. We need a CS plus 20 roll in order to touch the Broodmother. And Monty's combat skill is a 32. It'll be a 52 minus 
10, I'm assuming for fear. So we need to get a 42 and we need to do an arcane arts. All right, here we go. Looking for a 42. Oh, it's a 50. It's not gonna happen. All right, so they shrug that off. The fail will lose half. So mana is down to eight. Just enough to try again. I think we have to. Forty-two. We rolled a perfect crit. <laughs> Look at that. Now we're going to fail the arcane arts. Watch that. So under five, we get to add one. So our combat skill is going up to 33. Go, Monty, go. Now we got to do arcane arts. Minus 10. So this is a 50-50 shot here. See if this goes off. 42, it does. All right, we are out of mana. <laughs> We're in a bad shape, in a bad way, but. Oh, minus the casting value, which is seven. So we needed a 43. <laughs> Can't forget the casting value there. Wow. What luck. All right, we get to roll a D10. Ignoring the natural armor we have. And we're going to roll that here. And we got a 10. Monty is on fire right now. The Broodmother is wounded. That's all we need. We need that Broodmother to fall. Okay. What a turn for our fair wizard. All right, let's see who's up next. All right, bad guy. Um, so can't necessarily make enough room that isn't already there. I think we have enough room. So we need one of the rats to go. Right here, these two rats are here. This one could get Neely, this one could get Monty. Um, let's just do D6, one, two, three, this guy will go. Four through six, that guy will go. All right, so three, so the rat on the left there is gonna go. And he will take two standard attacks, most likely. He could power attack, so we need to roll those two D6. At half like a bomber. So 2d6. Red's first. So he will do the attack action. And the second six is a standard attack. Alright. So he needs a 45. And that's a 97. That's gonna miss. So second attack, most likely. Yeah, three and four would be a power attack, but he can't. Um, another miss, 83. Okay, that rat is gone. Back to the bag. So have lots of rats out. Another rat, we'll say that. Um... Use the brood mother or that other rat would go. Let's roll for them. I guess the the brood mother could have gone as well, but um, we'll go one to three, four to six, five. Brood mother's gonna go. We only have one action. Because they're wounded. And they could do attack at either Neely or Monty. We'll do the same thing again. See which one they attack. One to three, four to six. One, they'll attack Neely. So their combat skill is saying 45. There we go. 79, a miss. Miss on the rats. Okay, that's their go. Got a 
hero. So let's let, let's see if we go one, two, three. I think we could get an attack off, or we could just go for the rat that hasn't gone. Let's try that. Let's go for the rat that hasn't gone two attacks. From Bomber Berry Hill. Alright, 58 minus 10 here, minus the 5. So we're looking at 43. Two attacks at 43. Here we go. 89 is not going to do it. Second attack. A 20. That will hit. Let's roll damage. Come on, take him out. It's our short sword. Bomber's been an MVP here. He's taken out, I think, two of the three rats we've taken out. 26 plus two. Four plus two is six. This rat's gone. Way to go, dude. All right. Still scary. This game can turn on a dime, but I feel better that we've taken out so many rats. Who's up? All right, zombie. He can only move once, so he would go one, two, three, four here, and I think get an attack off on our dwarf. Ah, so many things happening. Goodness gracious. All right, 45. Fifty-three is not going to cut it. So the zombie misses. Good. And lastly, Dorland's going to go. And I think they just have to move and reload. So we'll go over this back corner. Reload their weapon. All right. Four heroes, four enemies left. A wounded road mother. It's all coming down to this, friends. So we'll put everything back in the bag. All right, so top of the new round, we have to roll scenario die. It's five, so no need to roll against our threat. And we try to keep the dungeon from completely collapsing because there's a lot going on. Let me pull stuff out of the bag here. Got a rat or a zombie. So let's think about enemy activation here. An enemy adjacent to a hero that could make room. Everyone's engaged already. Um, enemy adjacent to a hero. Everyone is adjacent to a hero. Enemy closest to a hero that could charge. Uh, I guess technically this rat could charge here. Um, so we might, might do that. And it'll charge this way. To Neely. All right. So need, needs to roll below a 45. All right, so here we go. It gets a plus 10, so this is a 50-50 shot here. Oh, let's roll that again. Keep the rolls inside. 45, so a successful charge. It would move here. It'll close the gap. And let's roll some damage. Six. One. One damage to Neely. Okay. Neely's down to eight. Out of 
15, or th 13, technically. Okay. Now what do we want to do? What do we want to do here? Who's coming out? A hero. Okay. Really would love Dorland to be able to take a shot. On the zombie is kind of what I'm thinking. It's like any enemy we take out is, is good because it's less activations, right? The broodmother I know can disease. So we could scoot in there, try to deal five damage on the broodmother. But we have people, we have people in range. Monty, I think is, is just screwed uh, <laughs> right now. Um, so yeah, why don't we take two strikes against the Broodmother? Because what is Monty's combat skill? His combat skill is 33 with the staff. That does a D, D8 damage. Uh, yeah, he could parry. Uh, or we could just get greedy. But it's 15 minus 15. Or it's 33 minus 15. So that means um it, the chance for monty to hit with that staff is really low although they can't really do anything else so yeah i think neely needs to go try to take out the brood mother with two attacks his attacks aren't great either but we could just we just hope for the best there was an object there when we got charged and pushed back i don't know if we deal get a hit for extra damage or um you know if we stop the object would you know, keep us from moving back, but let's see real quick. So there is an object blocking in the shove example. So I think it's, since that's the case, we're actually going to move uh, back here instead. So we're not on top. So that would mean we're not adjacent. Oh boy. To the brood mother. which is unfortunate. So that's interesting. If it's considered, it's considered shoved, not that we have to do the, the dex roll with shove, because a fumble would make them fall over. I wonder if you could fumble on a charge. Maybe so if, uh, if you're, you know, rolling the combat skill and lose it. Okay, do we want Neely still to go? I don't think so, because they now aren't adjacent to the Broodmother. I don't think Dorlin really has range on anything except for the rat that just went. It would be hard to draw a line through to the zombie here. If we go one. I think if we move him up one, we could trace. Oh, that rat's in the way. This is so tricky. So tricky, okay. Don't know. Don't know. Do we just try to take out the Broodmother? Move Neely up, do one attack. Five damage. Battle Axe is a D10 plus one and ignores armor. Well, so does the arrow. Trying to optimize here. Trying to optimize. Yeah, okay. Neely's moving one, two, on top of the coffin. Trying to attack the broodmother. Uh, 35. Come on, buddy. 98. Is that a fumble? That's not gonna that's not gonna be good. That makes sense for Neely though. Yep. If you roll a 95, not only do you fail, but the weapon takes a point of damage. Oh, and actually, I'm just looking at the, the height advantage does not happen. A fumble is a, is a true 100. Or no, a 0, 0. Here, rolling 100 when attacking or parrying damages his weapon. Okay, so no, yeah, we're okay on the 98. Whew, okay, back to the bag. Of close. Okay. 
So I think we'd try to maybe do the safe thing and attack this rat here with bomber. So let's do that. Let's do that. We could move him in there, but I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping we can thin the herd and get two attacks. The two attacks are kind of what I'm being greedy for here instead of moving and then attacking something else. Although those zombies, oh, okay. All right, what does Bomber want to do? Two attacks, 58, the short sword. Minus 15, right? So 43 is what we're going for here. That is a 13. So that one's going to hit. Let's roll damage with the short sword. D6 plus 2. A perfect record with one hit kills. Look at that. That guy's gone. Okay, we have another action. What do we do? I think we want to, oh, you know what? We attack this rat for sure. We turn here, attack that rat. Okay, 43. Let's go, 15. Can he go? Perfect game with these one hit kills. He can't, because that is five. Five needed out of the six. Okay. Still MVP of the game for sure. Which makes sense, that's on brand. All right. Two heroes need to go, two enemies need to go. Who will it be? A hero, okay. I think we go one, two, three. Shoot at the zombie. Right? I don't I don't know about crossing in between the middle of two enemy models. Like I, I feel like we might be able to, but I feel like that's probably gonna block line of sight. And we could possibly uh hit one of our guys if we go too close to the middle here. I just read that. We could possibly damage your heroes if you roll above 90, I think. So we'll just we'll take the safe route, shoot the zombie. Fair Elf is also afraid. So this is going to be a 63 is what we need against the zombie. 97, 8, darn, and run loaded. Okay. Use one more arrow. Used four. Let's go back to the bag. Uh, that's unfortunate. What's up? Monty, the last hero. I really don't know what we can do here. Apart from just praying for a miracle and bopping the brood mother, I guess. With our staff. We could go one and then go parry stance. Which is plus ten when parrying. Yeah, because 33 minus 15 is 18. It's not a lot, but stranger things have happened. Here we go. Add a mana. Yeah, 62. Do we try again? Or parry stance? We're squishy. We'll go parry stance. We'll play it a little safe. So plus 10 to dodge or, sh oh wait, does that matter if we used our dodge? Monty still has his dodge. We could try to use that if the Broodmother comes for us. Okay. So it's just the zombie and the Broodmother left. wants to go first. Probably the Breed Mother, they're engaged, so they will attack either 
Neely or Monty. We'll go one to three, four to six. Yeah, if adjacent to a hero, make room for more enemies to attack if needed, but they're wounded. So I feel like they would just attack. Yeah, let's try it. All right, so on a four, they'll attack Monty. And they have a 45. And they're involved in 85, so nothing happens. All right, now the zombie wants to go. And they would probably just move forward closely as they can up here. Roll their second into action. D6. That would just be a standard attack because they can't power attack. All right. Against Bomber, they have a 40. And they roll the 48, so they're going to miss. All right. Next round. All right. I moved this door out of the way so you can see a little better. I should have done that a long time ago. Um, but let's do scenario roll. Eight. So no roll needs to roll threat. And go to the bag. A wounded rat, a wounded red mother, bread, a wounded rat, a wounded brood mother, full health zombie. She's going first. Hero. All right. Do we just try to take, let's do this. Let's go with our MVP of the game. And we'll move two, three, because of the object ends under control, and go for the backstab. We're going to ignore natural armor, because of the backstabber, and we're going to roll what? Let's see. So this is our 43 again. Come on, dude. 52. Nope. That was a good idea. Back to the bag. Bad guy. All right. So we have the rats are adjacent. The zombie, well, the zombie's adjacent too, technically. Um, let's see. Don't need to make room, I don't think. Nobody can charge. I guess the rat could charge. Um, but we won't worry about that. Let's just go random. Let's let the dice decide. We'll roll a 10. We'll go 1 to 3, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8. Or no, no, let's see. 10 the best thing to do? Yeah, 1 to 3, 4 to 6. Uh, seven, eight, nine. Yep. This way. All right. Who's going? Uh, Broodmother. Broodmother wants to go. Uh, what do they want to do? They're adjacent to a hero. Don't need to make room. They're adjacent to a hero. Attack according to the table. And who would they attack? They're adjacent to three heroes. Um, we'll do the same thing again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so that's a 10. We'll just re-roll that. A 9. So coming at Monty, but we've got Perry stance up, which is kind of best case scenario. Uh, they have one attack they can, or one action they can do because of being wounded. And so we'll just try to dodge. All right, so Perry with weapon. It negates all damage, since a well-performed parry diverts this force. To manage this, you must uh, succeed in a combat skill. So our parry stance is basically just going to negate the fear. Um, well, that's not great. So plus 10 when parrying. Oh, plus defensive. So we're plus 20, which makes it 53, minus 10 for fear, which makes it 43. Come on, man. Forty-three. 
49. Oh, no. All right. Let's first, we didn't roll to see if the attack succeeded. I guess we had to do that first. Let's bring the those 45. Here's roll for the attack. 74. They would have missed anyway. Okay, that was the attack. Missed parry, so parry stance will go away, I'm assuming. Or we'll just say it'll go go away on our turn. So as that was there go. Let's go back to the bag. Alright, who's up next? Another bad guy. Alright. Let's do one to three and four to six for our two remaining enemies to see who would go. The zombie would go. And what does the zombie want to do? Um if adjacent to a hero attack according to the table, yes. Yeah, so they would turn, I think, and attack Bomber here. They have a 40 combat skill, so they would probably just attack twice. Or they could power attack, so let's roll a d6 and see what happens. Yeah, five to six, they would parry, uh, power attack. All right. They've been power attacked, but they don't have it to, bit, uh, to hit. They don't have anything in there to hit section, so they wouldn't lose that or anything. It's not really going to do anything except be bad for us. Plus 20. All right, so they got to roll under 60. Here we go. And they do with a 9. So let's roll hit location in red, damage. Or no, hit location in red. I think that's torso. Their damage is a D8 plus 1. All right, so 3 total. Two defense. All right, so we'll just take one. We're down to six, so we're down to half with bombers. So bombers wounded. All right, that was the zombie. Let's see who's next? Hero. All right, let's finish this. Or hopefully we can finish this. Goodness gracious. All right, Neely just needs to hit, for crying out loud, to take out. Yeah, let's go with Neely. We'll stay right there, attack twice on this wounded rat, because then it won't get a go. Then it won't get a go. So come on, dude. Redeem yourself here. I think it's low. I think it's 43. Two attacks. Come at 12, 25. Yeah, 25. Goodness. Okay. Just need one, buddy. 79 is not going to do it. Second attack. 72. It's not going to do it either. All right. Another hero gets to go. Should we do this? Probably do the same thing. Because we can easily hit this rat. Yes, yeah, so we'll reload and make a weapon attack against the last rat. Alright, so 78 minus 15, 63. Come on. 53. That'll hit. All we need to deal is one damage. Yeah, seven damage. Plenty. Well, it's a D10. Uh, yeah, got it. Ooh, okay. Unloaded weapon, but this rat is gone. None of I left. It's Monty. So, do they just want to try to smack the rat? I need like a mana potion. Is there a mana potion anywhere? All right, Monty. I guess miracles are possible here. Need an 18. We're going to staff attack twice. And we're going to do it. 
with another critical success, five and under, we get another plus one. So we're at 34. We're going to hit the Broodmother with a five. Wow. Okay, this will damage. We need five. Staff does a D8. Ignores. What am I thinking of here? No, it doesn't ignore anything. Just a D8. We killed the Broodmother. <laughs> Monty, you beautiful, beautiful wizard. Yep, so as you can see, Broodmother got 15 health, had 10. We just deal six more damage, kill the Broodmother. Whoa, Monty, you beautiful, beautiful human wizard. Okay, we're back. We're back in the bag. Scenario roll. A nine. Okay, with the roll against our threat. It's currently a six. And we rolled a five. Let's see what happens. So we can see here, there's a threat roll within combat section of the dungeon exploring handout here. So we're gonna roll a d10 and one of these things is going to happen. All right, so we're gonna roll a d10. And we got a two, so we got a greenish tent. It suddenly dawns on the heroes that the greenish tint on the blade or claw of the enemy is some kind of poison. This enemy gains the poisonous special rule and our threat decreases by two. Okay, so we now have a poisonous zombie in our midst, but that's okay. It had to happen. Now seems to be the best time. So make sure to remember that. Decrease our threat down to four. And let's go back to the bag. And the hero is going to go. So it seems like our most reliable hero at this point is Neely or Dorlin. Neely's right here. So let's let them go first. Dorlin does have to reload. Neely's going to, I'm sorry, not Neely, Bomber, our halfling. They're going to go right here. And we'll just do two strikes against this zombie. Two strikes at 43. Let's go, buddy. First one. 64. Second one. Well, you know what? They're not in the minus five that the Broodmother and Rat are. I was counting that. I've been counting that extra five. But we won't do that against the zombie. So it's just minus 10, so it's a 48. That one's still. So it just gets 48. Here we go. 44. That'll hit. Let's roll some damage. 1d6 plus 2. 6 damage. Let's go back to the bag. Another hero. We'll reload Dorlin and take a shot at them. Subtracting it by 10. It's gotta be a 68 here. 98. It's not going to cut it. Okay, lost another arrow there. Another hero. Um, let's move in. Attack with Neely. There at 30. One's not going to do it. All right. There we go. So 
Zombie. All right. Wait, we'll know the zombie goes. We'll just put this here. So they want to attack a humanoid. They are within range of two people. So the poisonous power stone says the stone gives the weapon a permanent poisonous ability. If a monster is wounded by this weapon, it loses one HP. Okay, so I think we're going to lose an HP every turn until the end of battle. All right, so we'll say between Neely and Bomber. We'll go one to three, four to six. Put that back in there. Six, it'll attack Bomber. Combat skill is 40. They have 49, so they're going to miss. So no need to be poisoned there. And last up is going to be Monty. Oh, they get to attack again, though. They get to attack again. Let's see who they attack. Same target. It's a 30. Oh, my gosh. 33, so they will attack. Successfully. Uh, the torso. And do five damage. Oh, their damage is a D8, though. Oof. Eight damage. Wow. Bomber might not make this. All right, so two bounces off. So he's going to hit for six. That's a nasty zombie. And Bomber's going down. When he was wounded, he actually wasn't going to be able to attack twice anyway. Okay, so he's bleeding out. All right. So we do have a bandage or two. We'll have to do that after the fact. Yeah, we have two bandages left. Um, but for now, Monty's going to go in here. Smack. Needs almost a quarter chance to go. He's got 24 in the combat skill. And 53 is not going to do it. All right. All right. Come on, Dorlin. Let's do this. Dorlin's going to reload and fire. At this zombie. He's at half health. So he's got 68. 92. Will not do it. All right, back to the bag. Zombie. What do they want to do? Same thing. Oh, the zombie's wounded too. I'll bomber back up because that was only, only had one attack. One, two, three, four, five, six. Neely, 40, miss. Okay. Yeah, we'll go back and double check all that, but I was just remembering the zombie could only attack once because it's wounded. So that's good. Okay. So now he's gone. And we just have two heroes left. Okay. Slate strike. It's time to redeem yourself. You need to take two attacks at this guy. We could do a power attack. That might be worthwhile. Yeah, the plus 20. Let's do a power attack. So meaning we're up to 50. Come on, buddy. 50 is what we need. 66. All right. You're dead to me. All right. 
Time for Monty to take two attacks. 24. All right, hey. 16 will hit. It's the damage on the staff again. D8. Seven, which will do it. Monty, close second for the MVP race. Look at that. Six plus seven is 13. Zombie only has 12 HP. So, wow, 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 wow. All enemies are down. What a game. Okay, let's settle in, see where we go from here. All right, so we're going to do streamlined looting once again. We're going to roll for loot without moving or spending action points. And we'll check over here. We do have a part table to roll on for the broodmother, part table for the rat, and just a T1. That's a four. And a four, we're getting a bandage. Here are the parts we can roll for by passing an alchemy test. A hero may collect parts from up to three dead enemies in line of sight. This takes two AP, does not require here to move around the tile. So we'll pick someone with the highest alchemy test and roll three times. Okay, and Monty the wizard has an arcane of 30. So we'll scroll there. A 78, yeah, so unsuccessful alchemy test. So we'll say we weren't able to get any parts from the rats. So now we could just go ahead and leave, but there are a lot of boxes in here. I thought what I'd do instead of going around and searching each one is start a new round and we'll move in here because there's a way you can search an entire room. This takes up an entire turn and requires a successful perception roll. So let's go ahead and do a normal round. So starting with the scenario die, roll a seven. And then we're gonna take all of our heroes and just move them in to this room because this is the one we'd wanna search. enough movement to get in there. We'll end this turn, start one more round. Throw the scenario die again. And we got a one. So now we're gonna spend the entire turn just searching this room. So we're gonna use Dorlin's perception to do so. We have to do a perception check. We can have each hero help as well. For the first hero, it's another plus 10. For the hero, it's a plus five. Uh, and so there, Wisdom is going to be 52 plus 10, make it 62, plus another 10 to make it 72. Let's go ahead and do a perception roll here, needing under 72. Okay, so we rolled a 31. All right, so since we're successful, we consult this table here. We're going to roll a D100 and see what happens. All right, so with a 70, uh, we find, well, a whole lot of nothing. Okay, let's just get out of here. That's what we're gonna do before we find a wandering monster or anything else. Let's go. So let's start with the scenario roll, the next round, seven. And we're gonna double move everybody. One, two, three, Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And he'll go next to him. I should really straighten up these tiles, actually. Okay, next round. Three, double move again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Five. 
Next roll. Two. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next one. Eight. Take her out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Monty, no. Watch something terrible happen here. Six, okay. And we're out. We're all escaped and we've completed spring cleaning. Here's the aftermath of this quest. It says the town elder is pleased with the hero's efforts and the rats in the village have become less common already and they act less confident. Surely they will disappear completely soon. News of Johan came as a bit of a shock though. He seems troubled telling the group. I was quite fond of him. Hard work or indeed. Figured he'd up and left the city. Maybe ran off with some local lass, but this is troubling indeed. The dead do not rest easy. But here, in the middle of my town? Before parting, the party is offered 50 coins extra per hero as a gratitude for finding Johan. The town elder recommends the party head to Silver City. He tells them, skills such as yours are highly sought after in the big city. To further help the party on, to further help the party on the journey, he offers them 10 rations to use on the road. Head to Silver City to continue the campaign. So as fun as this game is, it's actually pretty tough to film. And with all the rules and stuff, I, I just don't think I'm going to be able to juggle it that much to continue playing too much more. Um, if you enjoy it, though, please let me know. I'll, I'll try my best to keep it going. But it's really tricky to film and balance and to keep everything straight, juggling four characters and everything. So again, give me some uh, friendly uh, encouragement if you liked it. Uh, let me know what rules I should miss and, and pay attention to. But that's it for now. And as I said, I might not do much more League of Dungeoneers coverage unless there's a lot of people that really want it. But if you watch this, uh, thank you so much. There's been a ton of love for this game on the channel. It's grown the channel more than any other game I've covered, which has been pretty cool. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.